I'm here with Jane Fraser from Electronic Arts, uh, you're the test director. Yeah. Test director in Electronic Arts. And we're talking today about testing big and complex systems. So the first question I'd like to ask you is, can you just describe a little bit what testing a big, dynamic, complex system that is deployed and updated many times a day, what is that like? It's anything can go wrong at any moment. So you need a lot of planning, a lot of process around what you're doing and knowing how to react quickly. Um, we, you know, we deploy, especially in our marketing area in that, probably between 20 and 24 times a day. And having to know what's going on at any one time and having a communication plan so that you can really um, be able to react to it and have people know how to react. And that's a lot where we build all our process and uh, key elements around being able to react to whatever happens. Great. So are you constantly testing? I wouldn't say constantly testing, we're constantly monitoring. Especially on our production site, we have not only our IT, like the operations type monitoring of a server, we also have the front end monitoring we use to see what the customers are doing. We can tell at any one time if uh, no one's playing a particular game, if there's zero people in it, there's probably something wrong and that triggers an alarm. So we're you know, monitoring you know, when people come along and we have graphs that are very visual that everybody can see and like when there's a big drop, it's probably something's wrong. Um, although sometimes it can be just an event outside of ours. Um, one of the, the main ones we had that caught us off guard was uh, the finale of the first year of American Idol. <clears throat> we lost 200,000 people in one minute and we thought something went wrong, but everybody turned off the computer and went to watch TV. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's, which is where we find is one of the things in my talk I talked about is understanding your customer and knowing what they're going to do and like a lot of our customers are housewives and that, so we have dinner blips because they stop playing to go make dinner and then they come back, um, knowing that that's not a problem that it's just a common understanding the customer and what their flow is. Wow. That sounds complex. Yes. How do you decide on, on your testing coverage on such a large system? Um, again, that kind of comes back to the customer and really understanding what they want and focusing the most of your efforts on the key pieces that make them happy. Uh, when we launched our German site, we did not have enough time. It was our first time translating to a new language and the, the launch date and the testing time didn't, didn't work. It was like, there's, I said, I can't test it in that long. And they said, be creative. And I said, okay. We went back and we said, what if I only test creating an account, logging in, and playing a game? All the other features are off the table. If they work, great. If we get time to test them, great. But that we're gonna make sure those three items work. And they were like, yes, let's do it. And we did that. A lot of the other stuff, there wasn't too many problems, but those key areas and making sure we're focusing on what the, you know, what we really need, what is the key piece for our customer, and making those rock solid, and the other pieces is just try and do the best you can. Well, so uh, do you have a different reliance on automation uh, for these systems than your regular functional testing effort because they're so dynamic? And change so much. Yeah, a lot of ours, uh, a lot of our automation is more on an API level or a checking level to make sure systems are running. Uh, we verify all our games launch. We have a little more on our. Uh, well, a lot of our games are now coming out in Flash, so we do it just a um, almost an image recognition using Sikulu, and we just launch the game, see if you know the play now or something in the game is there, and that's enough. Um, from there, again, it goes back to knowing what our users are doing, and if there's no one in the game, there's a problem. Um, or if, you know, even our graphs, if they're erratic, it usually means people are getting in, something's wrong, they're leaving. And you get this jagged effect that we can see, and then we know we need to go look. Um, kind of a lot like, you know, Harry Robinson was talking about, like, you know, it's suspicious. And having things that show us where, where, do, you, where do you have to look? Um, because it's so big. You need something that kind of fine tunes you. Similar, you know, we have automation that runs on all our builds, and you know that more or less when you know the build comes up, the automation runs. Um, mostly, what it's telling me is where do I start the day? 
not you know it's not really t it's not it's more of a focusing tool than really uh, on you know hardcore automation. Well, that's interesting. The the last question I have is. Uh, what happens when you do find a problem? Like, depending on the risk, do you just go live anyway, even if you find a problem, or do you do rollbacks, uh, or if you do a hot fix, do you just begin the test process again? But when you say you have this automation that you just referenced in the last question, uh, do you just keep that automation going? Even the API testing, do you just keep that going? Do you run that multiple times a day? Yes, it runs, uh, we have a lot of our stuff runs on a continuous basis on the continuous build. So we have that continuous integration and test. Then we have uh, on our live site, we have automation running every two to four hours, depending on what we're testing, um, just to give us, you know, um, I call it sometimes the warm and fuzzy. I feel good. I know things are supp supposedly right. Um, when we do find a problem, uh, we have a whole process that we step through, which my talk went into quite a bit of. Um, and a lot of it is depending on, you know, thinking about whether do we fix it. Not all bugs need to be fixed. You know, they're not all, uh, you know, got to do it now. Um, one example we had is, you know, one of our games, we, it was a newly launched game, and we found out way late that if you got to rank 50, it would delete all your progress and take away all your badges and everything. And we said, well, I don't really think it's worth fixing. We got two weeks to the next major release, fix it then. And somebody goes like, but it's bad. And I said, anybody that gets to rank 50 in the first two weeks is cheating. Yeah. They deserve to lose their progress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm quite happy. Yeah. Um, so, but a lot of it too is like we have a, what I term a break fix in our company and we have a small subset, only five people can use it. And that would be, you know, put this fix on production now. No testing, no nothing, just go do this now. Um, and that's usually when what's going on in production is so bad already, I can't make it worse. So just go, go try this. It can't be any worse than what we got right now, give it a try. Um, you know, it could be from changing, you know, adding a column in the database or something, you know, whatever might fix this, try it. Um, rollbacks, uh, we, we do a little bit on our new technology. Our old technology is so related. It's kind of, it's, we've tried to roll back, I think about five times in my career there. And we've, by the time we've got everything in place to roll back, we figured out how to fix the problem and just went forward. It's much easier to go forward than backwards. Well, thank you. This has really been great. Thank you. This has been Jane Frazier from uh, Electronic Arts, Director of Testing uh, on testing large and complex systems. Thank you. Thank you.